Oh yeah, of course. Of course. As soon as I want to film, now you want to be all lovey. Ma'am. 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 Could you please? Could you please? Okay, ready? Jump down. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and in today's video, I wanted to give you guys some book recs, but specifically book recs about books that I will take no criticism of. Like I will take no crap. I don't care what you say. You're wrong. I'm right about these books. I said what I said. Uh, I think we all have these types of books, you know, ones that we've read where it does not matter if like the majority of the people hate them. These are our babies and we will die on the hill for these books. I have seen, I don't even know who I've seen do this so far. I know I've seen McKay. I don't know if Jess has, but I will link some videos down below of other booktubers who have done this. But honestly, he, look, you cannot change my mind on these books. These are the stand firm. I will not change my mind on these books, my babies. And I just thought I would share them with you. Maybe you'll find some that you're like, oh, I haven't read those and I want to, but most likely you probably have read these. These are pretty well known books. There's really no like hidden unicorns in here. So they're in no particular order except for the last one. The last book is my all time favorite that I will not accept criticism over. I do not care who you are. I do not care. You're wrong. And I'm right on this case. So if you have been watching me for a while, then you'll know which book it is. So like, if you want to take a guess, leave it down below. Um, but if you're new here, hi, hello. Thanks for stopping by. So let's just get in to the top 10 books that I will take no from. Okay, so the first book on my list is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. And you know what? I have every single book but one on here. So like, you guys should feel so privileged that I actually went and got the books off my shelf this time. <laughs> Normally I just post a picture. So Simple Wild. I read this book last, I want to say last January or January before that. No, I think it was last January. But in this book, we're following Kala and Kala is a city girl from Canada and she gets a phone call from someone who is near to her father, you know, um, in Alaska saying you need to come um, visit your dad because some things have happened and you know, you may want to come visit him. And she has never met her dad. Well, that's not true. She did, but she left, her and her mom left Alaska when she was two. So she doesn't really remember her dad. He was never one to really try to stay in touch. It just happens to be the right time to go because I think she was just laid off from work. She doesn't have much going for her. She's like, okay, I'll go. So, so her dad owns like a bush pilot company which is why on the cover there is like a little bush pilot plane type thing. Um, so she gets to the small town in Alaska and the people in the town are very nice. The people that her dad works with are very nice, except for one named Jonah. Jonah is our hero. He is a grump. He likes everyone but her. He sees her as the city girl who's not going to know her way around town. She's going to be high maintenance, yada, yada, yada. And it just kind of develops. They start hanging out together and then a relationship develops. And I'm pretty sure that, okay, so I was watching um, McKay's video about books she would never read. And she had this one on here because she's like, it's a clean romance. But if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure there's spice in this book because I wouldn't have rated it as high as I did if there wasn't. Um, so I'm pretty sure there is like the spicy is not like it's not like high level spice, but it's just enough. But I just really enjoyed it. I love the atmosphere of it. It made me want to go to Alaska, which nothing ever really does. No offense. It's just I have no really desire to go. But this made me want to experience it, if anything, through the eyes of Kala. So and the relationship between her and her father. It's it, you know, it tugs your heartstrings. I shed, I did shed a tear or two. So, um, just know there is like a father daughter relationship that has been, that hasn't really developed throughout the years. And she kind of has to mend that. Um, so, but I did, I, so I'm not going to take it. Like, I won't take criticism of this book. I love this book. So, I mean, some people may not like it, but then again, they're wrong. <laughs> You're going to hear that a lot. 
in this video, but I did. I really enjoyed this. I haven't finished with the series yet because I just, there's so many books and so little time and I feel like I don't ever have enough time to read all the books that I want or own and it gives me anxiety. Uh, but I was still highly suggest starting this if you've never read it because it is really good. Okay, the next book on my list is the only fantasy. I mean, I guess it's technically fantasy, but it's really romance more than anything else. And that's A Court of Mist and Fury, book two in A Court of Thorns and Rose series. She's a big one, but she's worth every single page in this book. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this because it is the second book, but if you know, you know. If you know, you know why this book is on my list. You know, we are following, we're still following the story of Thera as she, you know, escapes from someplace and is back at some place and she has to go someplace. See, I can't say anything. I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but really, honestly, you know what makes this book my favorite and it's Reese. Like I, I love Reese and I'm not going to tell you why because if you haven't read the books, I don't want to spoil it. But ah, I love this book. I love this book. I love this book. It's my baby. I love this book. <laughs> um, if, if you have never read a fantasy and you want to get into it and you don't mind romance in your fantasy and you like some spice I would highly suggest reading these books they are everyone's favorite for a reason and they're just so good I love these books and I love these covers and I hate the new covers that's another thing like I woo those mm, um chow anyway so I hate those new covers these covers work great I loved them they go with the story so well and then you just give me those ugly covers. Oh, I hate those covers so much. That's a whole other video. Okay, the next book's a little controversial for some people, but it ends with us by Colleen Hoover, okay? Uh, this is actually, I just got this book yesterday. It's the collector's, exclusive collector's edition that's at Walmart. So, you know, you got the nice price tag, but the inside covers are like the lilies. Are these lilies? And they're not, are they? If it is, that makes total sense. Um, and then you have like the hardback has her initials, just the pink and the white together pop. I love it. And then you've got like the gold foil on it. Where was I? My cat interrupted me. Yes, the collector's edition. So if you have never read Colleen Hoover and you've managed to stay away from her, good for you. Don't know how you did it. Uh, so this book is soon to be a movie, it is coming out. And Blake Lively is playing the lead character, Lily. And there's some other dudes that I don't know. I know his name is Justin and he's the director and he's also playing Ryle. And then there is another guy that I'm not, <laughs> I don't know his name, who's playing Atlas, but that's besides the point. So in this book, we are following Lily. Lily grew up in a situation that wasn't the best. Her mom was a victim of domestic violence and Lily was around that and she you know she witnessed that and and her, she always like had a journal and she wrote in her journal so we get flashbacks of the past like through her journal entries and she had a best friend named atlas and at some point in their life they just kind of drifted apart and never talked so now we're in the present and she meets a guy named ryle and they hit it off everything's great and they start dating and then Atlas comes back into the picture. It's like, great, you know, that's just uh -huh, wrong time, you know. Um, and then things start to happen that shows Ryle's real colors. Okay, so this book does deal with domestic violence. It is on page. So if that is something that is a trigger for you, be warned about that. And that's where a lot of controversialness, controversialness, um, and that's where a lot of the controversy comes into play. A lot of people feel like she shouldn't have benefited from writing a story based around domestic violence and getting money and things like that for it. Um, so here's my take on it. Here, here's my take. You can take it or leave it. You don't have to agree with me. That's fine. That's why we all have our own opinions. I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the way it was handled. I enjoyed the way that the author handled it. I have never been a victim of domestic violence, so I do not know. I am a therapist, so I have 
So I have experience working with people who have gone through it, but I have never personally gone through it. And just the way that she dealt with it and the way that it was written, because it is based on her mom's life. So she may, I don't want to like take up for her, but I don't know if maybe she only wrote what she knew from her mom's point of view. I don't know, but from what it was, I enjoyed it. Some people did not. So take that as you will, but we're all allowed our opinions and that's mine on this matter. <laughs> okay, the next book, again, some people just don't like these books and they're wrong. We've got The Confidence of Wildflowers and The Resurrection of Wildflowers. These are the dark and quirky editions, so these are the only ones I ever want because I just love these covers. Uh, but in this book, we are following Salem and Thayer. Uh, Salem is 18. Her friends are going off to college. She doesn't know what she wants to do with her life. She lives in a small town and currently she's living with her mother. And one day she notices that a neighbor moves in beside her. This would be Thayer. Hey Thayer, what's up? He's, he's not really grumpy and he's not too much older than her. I think he's like 30, 30, around 30. And he's, uh, I guess he's kind of grumpy, but somehow they form a friendship because he needs a nanny for when his son comes into town to stay with him during the summer or the weekdays or something like that. So she volunteers. A relationship just develops between the two of them. He finds out that she likes to run and he doesn't like that she's out running like in like morning when it's like still kind of dark. So he like makes a gym downstairs for her. It's, look, I love this duet and I don't care. Uh, trigger warnings, look up trigger warnings for this one if you have any. If you don't have any, go in blind, don't look them up. Uh, Cause I didn't know what was coming. Uh, this does end in a cliffhanger, so if you want to know the how the story ends, you have to read book two. Uh, book two does have a time jump as well. So, but still, I love this. I read this book in a day on my Kindle, and then the next, I was just, I just happened to read it the day before this book came out. So, I went straight to this one. I loved them. Some people hate these books, but honestly, I, I can't hate them. I love them way too much. Okay, the next book is actually one that I've never heard really too many people criticize about, but it's still one that I won't let anyone criticize about, and that's Praise by Sarah Kate. Okay, this is book one in the Salacious Players Club. This is a series that surrounds a sex club and the various patrons or owners of said club. And in this one, we are following Charlotte. Charlotte is currently, bro she's broke up with her boyfriend, Bo, and she needs to deposit from the apartment. And he's like, well, it got sent to my dad's. So if you want it, you have to go to, go to my dad's. So she does. She's dressed nicely. I mean, she's dressed pretty nice just to pick up a check, but you know, it is what it is. And she's in his office and he comes in. Emerson is his name. That's right there. That's daddy Emerson right there. And he comes in and he's like on your knees. And she's like, excuse me, sir. And he's like, you heard me on your knees. And she's like, okay, I really need this money. So, okay. And he thinks she is there to be his sex you Terry. <laughs> and no, she's just there for her check. She's just there for the check. And so they learn, he's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You know, yeah, yeah I thought you were someone else. And she's just highly intrigued. She's like, okay, but like, what were you going to make this other person do? And uh, he ends up giving her a job as a real secretary. And then it just kind of goes from there. She learns, you know, about the club and about what it is and he develops feelings and she does. So it's, it's just, mm, I love this book. So, you know, if you love a dad, like a age gap, this has it. If you like ex-boyfriend's dad, this has it. If you like kink, this has it. Of course, this is the praise kink. So like, if you like some good girl action, it's got you. It's got you, boo. Like this book is going to cover it. And then once you read book one, you have to, you're going to continue because it's, I didn't, but I know most people do. I just have an issue. Like I can't binge a series, but I will get to them. I own them all. I did read book five, which is weird because I don't do that. If you know me, I don't, I don't read out of order. I don't watch out of order. It's very strange, but highly, highly, highly suggest you read this. Okay. The next book is the only book I don't own. And that is Perfect Strangers by JT Geisinger. Look, I know some people hated this book. They read it and they were like, oh my gosh, what did I just read? That and Pen Pal. I was very like on the fence of which one I liked more, but I have to go with this one because I wasn't spoiled with this one and I was spoiled 
before I even went into pen pal. So I knew the, I knew the twist. Perfect strangers. I cannot remember the, t the names. It's James and someone else. Oh, this is going to piss me off. But she is a writer and her agent is like, hey, I know the things have been going on right now. I think she's going through a divorce and the agent's like, hey, I own like a apartment in Paris. Why don't you go for the summer and like get away and try to like clear your mind and stuff. And she's like, okay, I can do that. So she goes and the first day there, she's at a cafe and she meets James and there's like an instant connection. It is very Insta-like, you know, so if you don't like Insta-like, eh, like I don't, but I could, I could get down with this one because like you're in a different country. You're never going to see the person again for the most part. And that's what they do. They're like, Hey, let's just give each other the summer because I'm going back in September and you're going to stay here. So let's just give each other the summer. We won't ask any questions. We're not going to get into any baggage. We're just going to have fun. Well, stuff just starts coming out, you know, and baggage is opened and it, it but it's such a good book. It's so, it's so good. It's so good. And I can't say anything else because I will spoil it, but just go in blind. I'm trying to think if there's any triggers. I don't think there is. But just like go in blind. Was there any? Dana, I can't remember. But if you can go in blind, go in blind because it was such a ride. And I remember just like losing my mind when I was reading the ending of it. It was so good. I know people are like, I hated this book. I don't care if you hated this book. It's so good. <laughs> it is so good. Uh, the next book is A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole. Now, this is technically a YA book and it's the only YA book on the list, but it's so, it, it it'll make you shed your soul like literally i felt i was crying out my soul reading this book uh in this book we are following rune and poppy they meet when they're little and they kind of just spark a friendship um rune is from russia i do believe and when they turn 15 he has to go back to russia with his family for two years and then they're coming back to like the same house and everything well during those two years they lose touch uh, Poppy stops writing to him. He doesn't hear anything from her. So when he moves back, he's like this completely different person. He has shut the world out. He is angry. He's like a bad boy now. And she doesn't know how to tell him the reason why she stopped talking to him. And it's this book is just about them kind of reconnecting after those years. And it's beautiful. And I don't want to say anything else. But just know like the title, A Thousand Boy Kisses, is interwoven into the story in a beautiful way. Like I love when you can take the title of a book and like it's represented in the story like perfectly. It's this. Uh, I love it. Some people didn't like the ending. Like what? What do you mean you don't like the ending? What do you mean? I think it was a perfect ending. I don't care. Like bob my eyes out. Loved it. So if you're looking for like a good tearjerker, this one's for you. Even if it's YA, I still, I loved it. The next book is Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. If you'd like to tr take a trip into the mafia world and you never have before, start right here. This will be your best friend. It's not too heavy a mafia. It's just enough to where it's not too gory, not a lot of blood, not a lot of killing. Poppy, how did you get up there? How did you get up there? So in this book, we're following Ada. I'm pretty sure her name's Ada. I said it wrong last time, but I'm pretty sure it's Ada and Cal. And Ada and her brothers are, their family is one mafia set. And then Cal and his family is like another mafia set. And their dads are like the heads of the two mafias. So the start of the book, Ada and her brothers go to Cal's house because they're having a party and she accidentally sets the place on fire. Like she doesn't mean to, but she does. He finds her. The siblings start fighting and then the, finally the dads have to step in and they're like, okay, stop. We cannot have this. And you two are going to fix it. We can't have our families fighting like this. You two are going to fix it since you both are the eldest. You're going to fix this. The only way to fix it is for you two to get married. So they got to get married. And from, it's just such a good book. They're, oh my gosh. Like I never can look at strawberries again the same way. If you know, you know, there's just like, there's pranks. She literally tries to like kill him at one point. He gets her back. And then all the while, as this is like building, the tension is building and then it ex explodes and it's just so good. It's just so good. And then you, once you read this, you have to keep going and you do. Cause like I did. And if I did, you know, it's that good. Just do yourself a favor. If you haven't picked up these yet, oh my gosh, you have to. They're, it's just so good. The second to last book is Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. Okay, this is another ex-boyfriend's father age gap I just those two are like my bread and butter I don't know what it is I love 
those two tropes. Plus he's a single dad. So there's a third trope. I don't know. Okay. So in this book, we're following Jordan and Jordan is celebrating her birthday at the beginning of this book at a movie theater without her boyfriend because he's a scumbag. And <laughs> she meets this guy and he's a little older. He's like in his late thirties. I think she's celebrating her 19th birthday and he's like in his later mid to late thirties. Um, he's not too much older than her. Like each wives and they meet they really hit it off and then as they're leaving her phone rings and it's her boyfriend and he was like arrested or something and this guy overhears the conversation and come to find out that he's like oh you're my son's girlfriend and she's like oh snap you're my boyfriend's dad um <laughs> well her boyfriend gets out of prison and like i said he's scum he doesn't he's not working or anything so he's like we have to move in with my dad and she's like oh okay and I'm like oh <laughs> okay and so they move in with Pike that's his name good old Pike Loss Lawson Pike now I can't think of what his name is I always just say Pike or some go with Pike okay so they move in and it's just it's, it's a slow burn of them developing feelings letting themselves be okay with having the feelings and then getting together because eventually like the the son moves out and it's just them so it's like not as weird because the, the son would still be there but it's just oh he's you know he's like a blue collar guy he owns a construction company he takes her to this construction company a lot and like she, he's getting all jealous because the guys are watching her and stuff it's just so good like oh my gosh this is a classic for a reason if you have not read this book yet i i highly do it. It's so good. It was my first Penelope Douglas and I'm so glad I read it because now I just, I, I adore it. Literally one of my faves. And then the last book, Poppy Seed. The last book. Did you make a comment down below and guess? Because if you're not new here, you know what it is. Are we ready? A Love Letter to Whiskey by Candy Steiner. This book is perfection and I will not hear otherwise. I will not listen to anything but praise for these, this book okay this is the original this is the five-year anniversary with jamie's point of view so in this book we are following b and jamie um they literally run into each other when they're running okay and she sees him but he sees her best friend this starts in high school and kind of what happens is he starts dating her best friend and they just become they kind of become each other's person because of that mutual friendship you know, mutual person in the middle. And as the years go on, you know, she loves him. She's got feelings for him, but she thinks that he doesn't. And things happen. And then he's like, yeah, there's feelings. And that's never the right time. And then they try and that's never the right time. This is literally right person, wrong time, the whole book. So if that's not your jam, do not read this book. So this is just her point of view. But if you want to get like the whole story, like, what he was thinking during this time read this book because it's the same story as a friend and then in the back jamie's like hold on a second that's not how it went down at all let me tell you how i was feeling during these moments so you get like the whole wraparound story but this book broke me i wanted to throw it but i didn't because it's a baby i will never throw you but seriously oh if you love angst if you love friends to lovers if you like right person, wrong time, the whole book, do yourself a favor and read this. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's on KU. I will not shut up about this and there is nothing bad about it. Don't even try. Don't even try because you can't. Like you literally can't. I don't know if I've read or talked to anyone that's like, yeah, I read those books and hated them. It's that way for a reason. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But those are the books. Those are my 10 books that I would take no crap on. You cannot say anything about these books. They are my babies. No criticism no way it's not happening not today not my channel no way uh but please let me know down below in the comments what are your take no crap books like take no criticism it doesn't matter what anyone says they're still your favorites and they're just wrong okay um if you don't want to leave a comment but you want to leave an emoji to let me know that you were here leave me the whiskey emoji or some sort of like alcoholic beverage because the number one spot was love letter to whiskey okay i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new and would like to join the family 
I would love to have you stick around. My social media is linked down below. My Goodreads and my Instagram if you want to stay more up to date and day to day with what I am reading. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys. Hold my foot to sleep. Poppy, I need you to get down. What are you doing up there? Ma'am, ma'am, it's hurting my chest. Oh look, I cannot have that. That does not look good. Ooh, God, look about makeup on my book. Uh, her dad owns, ugh, I can't breathe, I'm so out of breath. <sighs> Chasing cats, goodness gracious. Are you kidding me? No, are you kidding me? Con, what is it? Controver, controversion, controversy. I developed, <laughs>